Good morning ladies and gentlemen, Strat Gamer here, providing you with a new Anno 1800 episode and it is a new episode in our complete guide series and today we are going to talk about oil, electricity and fuel. Electricity is very critical in the end game, so this is something key to understand. And fuel, with its impact on your farms, can also really be a game changer. So, hope you're excited about this episode. Before we dive in, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're into strategy games, city building games, simulations, that's exactly what I cover. So don't hesitate, don't hesitate to subscribe so you never miss another video and you help support the channel. Also, um, I have created a new Discord community for the channel. Don't hesitate to check out the link in the description below. And speaking of description, for this complete guide series, in each episode you will actually find a very long description. Most of what I'm talking about I'm writing also in those descriptions, including a lot of the links that you may want to check out to learn a few more things. And also a few things that you know I think are important but I just forget to tell you during the stream, uh, I add them in that description. So please don't hesitate to check out this description. Okay, so let's dive in. First, as always, with our overview. So, oil, you can produce it via various ways and it generates electricity via the power plants or also fuel. And you can do that across many regions. It's not only something for the old world, but also uh, in other regions. Again, in the description below, I've posted many links um, on the oil, the oil refinery, where you actually generate your oil. As you can see here, one is on an example of an oil refinery from these wells. Um, also the fuel, power, uh, the fuel station. So let's dive in into those production chains. The oil, as I said, the main or the normal reason way to get it is through an oil refinery like this one, where you click here to build oil wells on these oil deposits. And when you get to an island, Oil Springs, you can already see it immediately. So here is six, on this one we have five, um, this one has zero, for example. So that's very easy to, to see them. Um, they look like this. And one interesting thing is that um, since Land of the Lion, with the Research Institute, you can move these oil springs. Right? You click like this, and you can move it. Um, it's important to note that you cannot move them actually when something is built on top, right? So you actually need to delete your oil well and then move it. Why move them? Well, as you can see here, by moving them, then you can just put them in one corner that you weren't going to use instead of having them sort of space out in the middle of your island. So that's very powerful. And again, this is not only in the old world, right? Like I'm in the Cape here. You can find them, of course, in your normal old world. You can see here five, for example, that I've put in this corner here, but also in the new world. Uh, here, 22, for example. And you can see I've <laughs> put them all there. <laughs> So that's the first way to um, build them. And if you do um, want to use that, you need to connect your oil refinery to an oil arbor, like this one, which can be upgraded, as you can see here, via those railway here. So that's quite important. On the other hand, when you uh, use items like, I'm um, sure I'm gonna have some here, right? Let's check here, exactly. So in, on your mines, again, in the old world, but also in the new world, on your mines, if you put um, Georg von Malkin, as you can see, extra good oil, one every one cycle. So that's huge, especially when you have, uh, you know, you increase the productivity of those mines to have a short cycle, then that's going to be a lot of oil. And when that's the case, you don't need to link your um, mine to the oil arbor. That's fine. Yes. The oil will just appear in your arbor uh, magically. You do need still an arbor. If you don't have the arbor, they won't produce it. But that, that is um, great that at least you don't need to connect the mines. 
Um, and lastly for the oil, it can't be bought, it can't be sold, and you need a special ship. Um, sure, we have many here, uh, like this, oil tankers to transport. And this one can only transport um, oil, and they only have one slot for 400 oil. Um, so you may need quite a few of these. So that's um, the oil overview of production. Now for the electricity, similarly there is the normal way to do it, but then there's also other ways. And then for the electricity here, actually it is only in the old world. So that's uh, one of the differences. And you can see, and if you go to city, you will see so electricity here. That is sort of the normal way. Where again, it needs to be connected to the harbor via a railway. Uh, and you have this oil power plant. This is sort of the normal way where you can do it. Then there is another way to get electricity, which is with gas. Gas produced in the Arctic, delivered you know, to your island, and then it goes into gas fire, gas fired, sorry, power plant. Um, and this one's what's interesting or worth noting is that they have a larger influence area than your normal um, ones. And also they don't need to be linked to the arbor. There's no need for, for that. Um, but you do need a warehouse to, um, to deliver the gas basically. Um, and the second thing to know about gas is that it's actually quite limited, right? Uh, I think the maximum is 17 or maybe 18 that you can have if your Arctic is fully optimized. Versus, as we've seen just before, for the oil, you can have so much oil. Like, I think most players in the end game are um, drowning in oil. While we're on this island, uh, it's good to see that you can this uh, oil store, you can increase your storage of oil um, similarly than your storage you know, for, for goods with those um, oil store in your arbor. There's no nothing on your island that can increase that, but on your arbor area. But it's not finished. There's also another way to get electricity. And it's via some items, and in particular for um, many of the productions. I don't know, I'm sure I have many. Um, the first one that's yeah, here, that's known by many, is Angela Meg Iver. Provides electricity, so, and so it's for all uh, production buildings. That's why she's um, so well known, because you can use it really everywhere. So with, the build, with her in your trade union, the buildings that are inside uh, the area of the trade union won't need um, a power plant. They will still have electricity. So that's, um, that's very useful. And now lastly, let's talk about the fuel station. And for the fuel station, what's also very powerful is that you can use it in farms across all of your regions. And here it's not even uh, the new world, even if on the new world for sure. Like here you can see, I have some power stations, a uh, fuel station, sorry, which um, will help for my tractors, but also in Mbesa. Um, I'm sure I can find, and for the, the regular viewers of my series and episode, you can see that this is a very old save um, because I didn't want to use my 3 million population save for this because um, I, I made a few changes to show you so as you can see here, also a fuel station. And you should want to use it everywhere, right? Because if you don't know, um, and sorry, I should have said that for the electricity before too. So electricity is very important uh, for many aspects. The first one, uh, let's check some investors, is that it is a bas basic need for your investors, also for your engineers, because as you can see, it's at the top here, so it's always in the previous tiers. It is also for your scholars. If we look here, scholars also need electricity. So first, as a basic need for many. Then, there are some buildings that just require it. Without electricity, it don't function. And it, it sort of starts um, in the engineer level. Uh, not this one. 
here. For example, the clockmaker requires electricity as you see here, uh, otherwise it just doesn't function. And then for many other buildings, like the light bulbs factory, you don't need it, but it's improved by electricity. And what it means is that with electricity, you're going to double the base productivity. So instead of 100%, you're going to go directly to 200% of productivity, which is huge. Um, of course, let's note that you also double the inputs, right? So it doesn't mean um, that you, you just create light bulbs out of thin hair, but what it means is that you're going to need a lot, I mean, you're going to need half, basically, the number of light bulb factories than if you didn't have electricity. For the fuel stations, for our tractors, that is even more powerful. Why? Because tractors give you not just uh, uh, electricity in a sense, but more than that. Um, you can see it here. First, they give you 200% productivity, not 100%, 200%. Then they also decrease the workforce need by minus 50%. So with that, you're able to have many of your farms without any workforce. Like you can see this whole island here. I don't have any houses, no houses at all. And you see the number of farms. And lastly, it produces an extra good of whatever you're producing, right? Here it's cotton, so it's uh, one cotton, but if you are producing wheat, it would be wheat, etc., etc. every three cycle. So in terms of just increasing the output of your uh, farm, that is just huge. And you can see this is what uh, the, the fuel from the tractors. The only uh, negative element, if you don't know about the tractor, is that it increases the mo number of modules by 50%. But honestly, that's, compared to, to that, um, that's just nothing. So those fuel stations, you definitely want to put them everywhere. Now, let's talk quickly about the production rates of, uh, of all those things. So the oil, it's one ton of oil every 15 seconds for each of those wells, right? It's not for the refinery, it's for the wells. Um, so that means four per minute, right? And that means, you know, if you have many wells, that multiplies, of course, per minute. And the other elements that's interesting is that it can be improved by... Oh, uh, the working conditions, right? You can see plus 50 and also by items. I am not sure what items I have here. So as, once again, this is an old save. Uh, ah, that's pretty much the perfect items. <laughs> so the bechamel converter, ferras and printing press. And if we go here, we can see they are improving it. So that is quite huge. As you can see with that, you can go to huge product uh, percentage. And it gets so big sometimes that you better have uh, first a big arbor and also an arbor that's close so that your trains can deliver very quickly. Here you can see, once again, it's an old save, it's not optimized, some arbor is full. Um, so the, uh, the production is, is really limited here. Then for the power plants, it is one ton, and uh, maybe let's go here to check it out. Where do yeah, I have power plants? So the power plant here, it is one uh, ton of oil that is consumed every five seconds, right? So given that the refinery um, stuff without items and everything produces one ton every 15 seconds you need three oil wells for one power plant now if you start having items and things like this of course that's completely changes uh, um, the equation and then and then if you don't know you can use control q <coughs> to get your production where tab where you see oil and you can see you know how much you're producing how much you're using um, for these oil power plants, you can also have items. Uh, there's none on this one, but maybe on the others. Here, is there? No, I don't have any items either. Um, so let me do. Do I have another island started here? Maybe. 
I didn't put it. Anyway, um, so you can, and in particular what you'll probably want to do is to have items to decrease your workforce, right? Because otherwise it's 150. If, um, you know, you have two of these, for example, on this island, you're going to get into negative. And you don't want that if you're in particular doing a, a record like, like this save. So you're going to decrease um, your workforce, you know, with something like the printing press or the extremely loud bell. What's important for this um, oil for this power plant, oil power plant, is that if you use items that will increase your productivity, it's actually not going to do anything in terms of output, right? Like, you're, I mean, you're getting electricity anyway. It's not like you're going to get more um, area of influence, for example. It doesn't work that way. But it will actually increase your input needed, right? So you will consume more oil, for nothing, in a sense. So you do want to be careful and use, for example, more of the extremely loud bell, which decreases your workforce without improving the uh, productivity. Then on your fuel stations, it consumes one ton of oil and then produces one ton of fuel with that. And it does that every 15 seconds. So once again, uh, four tons a minute, so very similar to um, the oil, um, you know, refinery. And with that, you know, the, the fuel is then delivered to the tractor barns that are in the influence range. And it's worth noting that similar to the oil power plant, it does need to be connected to the oil arbor. Um, so if we check there. You know, they are here and they are indeed connected. So you see that railway there. Um, then for these tractor barns, they consume one ton every five minutes. So they, it's quite slow, which means one fuel station like this can theoretically um, supply 20 farms. Now, that changes when you have items and I've also observed, uh, and I'm not, I'm not the only one, I know Ubisoft also said it shouldn't happen, but I know I'm not the only one who saw it many times, that when you have a, la a sort of large distance you know, to, to deliver, for example, this one is, is going quite far right, to deliver to here, um, this theoretical limit actually decreases. So you do want to be a bit careful about that. Um, but yes, you, you can definitely use items to improve it. And once again, control Q is a bit your, um, your friends there, right? Um, and as you can see, that's why also here I'm producing 28 because I found that when I was at 21, uh, it wasn't enough. And just because I think of the distance. But it is good to note, right, that this distance is quite like high, uh, right? This one can deliver up to here or even up to there. Uh, well, thanks to, uh, I'm guessing, this road here. Uh, over, of course, all the way over here, all the way over here, all the way over here. Um, so they have quite a, a large range. Now let's talk about layouts. And in my previous episodes that you may have seen, like the pigs, um, the layout was quite important. It was, it was a big part of the episode. I think this episode is not really true. Like It's not like there's going to be amazing layouts for, for those things. Um, I think a few elements I wanted to show you. Let me just take a base island. Uh, where is it? Uh, no, consumable, sorry. Those fuel station, and it's the same for the, the power... Um, the power stations. So if you put two like this, you know, I've seen a lot of players do that, then do that, then do that, then do that, or even just do something like this, you know. That's not really needed. Your train can enter here, exit here, and just go there. So, you know, you can take all of this out and just have this, and it will work, no problem. Similarly, again, for the power station, uh, this one. 
and as you can see it can only be constructed in the old world as I said before. Um, now if we're talking about electricity uh, or power plants in general, right, you can see the range in green but you can also see that the roads have these small electrical poles. So that's a visual way to see where, uh, especially when you're not clicking, right? Like I'm not clicking anymore now, so I don't see the green, but I still see those power um, poles. And so you can see, that, for example, is there a place? Now I think I have pretty good coverage on this island. I mean, that's the goal, but um, yeah, you could see it. And then the last element I wanted to say about the layouts is, as I just said, for the fuel stations, I suggest to not put them close. You know, so I think when I first started try to understand this thing, I, I used to put them really inside the layout, like this one here. So with that, you can deliver very quickly for sure. But it has two problems is one, your trade union, you want to use it with items for your farms, right? Which is not going to help for this guy. So then this guy has a lot of workforce, he's not being boosted and all of this. The second is that it requires um, the railway to go right inside your, um, your farm layout, which isn't great at all. What you want to be doing is something a bit more like this, right? You're going to have your farms layout like this, maybe another one there if you even want. And then in sort of in between, you're going to have a small trade union that just covers fuel stations. Because once again, you see their um, area of influence is huge. So that's what I would really suggest you do. Now let's talk about local departments. The next section is section as always. Of course, for local departments, everything I say, you know that it's always better if you have a level 25 on your palace. If you don't know what I'm talking about or why level 25, don't hesitate to check out the video that will pop up now and that is also in my description below. Now if we're talking about oil refineries or uh, fuel stations, well, first of all, you know that in the New World or in Enbesa, you don't have local departments, so that's easy. But now if we're talking about the Old World, um, and I'm sure I have an example to show you, maybe this one. Yes. So on this one, right, I have a fuel station for my uh, farms here and there, but I'm not going to really use a local or choose my local department for that fuel station because I have many other things on it, right? Similarly, if we look um, at this island here, right, if we remember, I had my, my oil oil refinery here. I'm not going to choose the local department based on this one local refinery when I have 200,000 um, scholars on this island, right? The local department that I'm going to choose is actually probably more linked to uh, this, um, this scholar, right? And in particular here, the influence for public buildings so that I have a lot less need for universities and also electricity, by the way. <laughs> so, you know, they won't be that important. Um, if you really want an island with tons of oil and, and things like this, then yes, maybe you're going to use the uh, Department of Labor to get plus 60% productivity and maybe a force item on your uh, trade union, but that's basically all. Now, for your power stations, which you probably will have a lot of, right? If you have an island that's really focused on production, then once again, you will most likely care more about those productions than um, the, the power plants. But on many of these islands that are maybe more for uh, population, then I'm pretty sure you're gonna want to do this here, which is select the Department of Welfare, which will increase uh, for your power plants, but also for many other things, right? Like your university, your banks and etc. Uh, it will increase the area of influence by 60 and you can potentially also select this one the citywide 
web act, which will increase it even more by plus 15 uh, on top of that. Which means that for you know an island as big as this one, two power plants are enough to cover the whole thing. So really can't you know I, I don't I don't know why you wouldn't use that on a population island. Uh, that's just me maybe. <laughs> Okay, almost there. The next section, as always, is the museums and other you know cultural sets. And I have to say that, as far as I know, you know, for oil or electricity, there's pretty much nothing that's interesting. Uh, if I missed one, do not hesitate to tell me in the comment below. I'd love to hear about it. And then lastly, the section that most of you always wait for is the items and specialists. So let's start with the um, oil refinery, and I think we saw it here. So let's go back there. You know, yes, so this is uh, one. As always, you'll have two choices, either uh, no workforce or having as much productivity as you, you can. So if you want no workforce, that's pretty much these three. The bechamel converter, um, which once again I find is a really interesting item because they say affect all iron works and foundries, which is very vague in my opinion because <laughs> I mean oil refinery guys, <laughs> it is impacting it. Um, so productivity plus 60 and workforce minus 50. So you're already halving your workforce. You can add the printing press for minus 40% more of workforce and Ferras gives you the last 10 and also a great productivity boost. So with this, you are at your workforce. If you want to get to um, the max productivity that you can, you're still gonna use those two, right? Because 60%, 50%, but you're not gonna use this one. You're gonna use uh, Control T, the, uh, what's called Lord Footprints, this one, which is a book. Um, that I don't really use. But as you can see, once again, all ironworks and foundries plus 55%. So that's huge. So that's for the oil refinery. Then, as we said before, there are ways to produce uh, yes, like this one to produce oil with items, and in particular with your mines. Georg van Malkin, you can put it everywhere. I mean, productivity plus 70, so already reducing the cycle time quite a bit, and oil every cycle, that's huge. And then depending on if you want, you know, no workforce, the max productivity, or also sometimes um, I'm using the item to get more iron, you know, you, you, you lose different items. But basically, of course, if you want to maximize your oil, in that case, you will want to maximize your productivity so that your cycle time is very low and therefore in each cycle you produce one more oil. Then for your power plants, uh, let's see, I'm not sure, or maybe let me just show you. Uh, there are three items that are great for your power plants. The first one is the former Before in Wiz, affect oil power plants, workforce need minus 80. So as I said before, you know, you probably want when you have several power plants on your island and you're not, you don't want to have engineers, then you can use her. On top of the workforce also reduces, I mean, eliminates <laughs> fire and explosion. So that's quite nice. And then there are two other ones, and then it depends once again what you want to do, to do, of course, right? If you want to get to zero or force, you'll probably use, um, you know, something like uh, the, elect the extremely loud bell, right? Because it will get you minus 50, uh, and it will not improve the productivity is important because again as I said before if you improve electric productivity you're going to consume more oil for nothing but what the ones that I do like to use is this one the leading electrical engineer because it will produce oil once again 
one out of three, so reducing your consumption by a third. Um, and that's great, right? Because that way you need to deliver a lot less to all those islands. And similarly, you have the magnetists. It's only an uncommon one, so quite cheap uh, if you want to buy it. And it's only one, it's one out of five now. So a bit less, but still quite useful. And then lastly, for your fuel stations, For the fuel station, well, um, there's no items that are really impacting them per se. They only get the items that are impacting all production buildings, like ferrous or the extremely low bell. If you read the description, it says affects all production buildings. And yeah, I mean, usually I would probably use those three that you can see here to get no workforce uh, because the extremely low bell loud bell will get minus 50, minus 40, minus 10, so you're at minus 100, and you do get a bit more of uh, productivity, which will enable you to cover a bit more farms than um, usual. Okay, and then lastly, I said before that there were some items that also provide electricity, like Angela. Um, I'm not going to show you all of them, but um, just a few examples. So indeed, Angela provide electricity and also workforce. Then two that I really like is Prof Rami here. Provide electricity, but also productivity and all of these extra, extra goods. Um, she's good in particular in your light bulb factory because you're going to need some quite a few for your engineers, and then you produce all of this for free. And then the other one is Seraphin. Also provides electricity, productivity, and wood veneers. And it impacts carpentry works and window makers. So in particular, I like to use it when I'm building my veneers. If you've seen um, some of my other episodes, um, or you can check the one that's popping now above, you'll see I have a lot of wood veneers for my telephones. Okay, so here are all of the items, all of the you know production chains, layouts, and things to know about oil, power plants, and fuel stations. If you have any questions, any suggestions, um, any comments, please do not hesitate to share them below. I'd love to hear about it. And otherwise, I hope to see you in the next episode.